Hi, I'm Tony Sanders and I'm going to give you a quick how-to on setting up and using the Interwrite whiteboard. This is the box that has the cables you need to plug into your computer so that you can interact with the whiteboard. So this piece right here, which comes out of there, um, is for your monitor. It's a standard thing, plugs into the side of your monitor. This right here, this USB jack is located right here on the side of the box and this needs to be plugged into the side of your computer so that you can actually have interactivity with your own uh, software program and so that you can write and capture stuff and save it on your computer. Okay, I uh, have the two cables that I need to plug into my laptop. Here's the video piece, it just plugs it straight in. And over here, this is the USB and I just plugged into the USB. Now I'll be ready to set up my computer and have it interact with the whiteboard. Okay, the first thing we want to do is go to eInstruction.com to download the software we need for the interactive whiteboard. Alright, so we just can go over here to Sport and Downloads. Go to Downloads. And what we're looking for under Windows is the Interwrite workspace software that's right here. And what you want is not the content, but you want the workspace software here, version 9.1. After having installed the software, I'm bringing it up. And what I get first with my regular desktop screen showing is the menu right over here. And what I can do at this point is I can bring up a file or create a new file. And there are a couple ways to start a new file. Now what we're going to do is take a quick tour of the Interwrite Workspace Control Panel. That's this piece right here that's uh, sort of the lifeblood and the control center of everything you're going to want to do when you're working with Interwrite Workspace pages. Okay, there are several important features about this panel. This first little button just minimizes the toolbar and then you can move it around. This is the workspace menu where you have the options to open and close files, save them, print them, export, import, export as a PDF, etc. Editing a file, you can undo and paste. Some of these different options are located more directly here as a set of uh, control panel choices. These can be customized, by the way, as well. Next up, we have tools, which gives you a vast array of different things you can do and use. Uh, setting up equations, you can get a ruler, triangle. Further down, capturing, freehand text recognition, or a curtain. So you can cover over something on your workspace page, a spotlight, a gallery. Record and playback is a way that you might want to capture your keystrokes and then show students how you're working through a different um, problem or writing some text, etc. So lots and lots of stuff here. Aside from tools, here's pages. This is another way to create blank pages, create grid pages, all kinds of options here. There's a help menu here. Preferences is where you'll be able to go and change the look of this set of little icons for your particular use, your own choice. So you go to Preferences, and then Preferences comes up with a whole new menu, Tablet Settings, Gradient Page Settings, Customized Toolbar. This is where you can save different kinds of toolbars under different names. So you can have a basic toolbar, you can have an intermediate toolbar, you can have an advanced toolbar, and then you can have your own special new one. You can look at the different options here. You can look at a new page setup. This is where you can change the grid size if you wanted to create a graph page. We can just change the number of pixels that are spaced between the different lines. And we can create different line colors. 
and line type solid, dashed, or dots, and the line width, etc. Now, what I have done is I told you before that the mouse is something I like to use to go back and forth between uh, my screen and something I want to capture and the pages that I have. If I don't want to capture this page but I want to go back to workspace, I can go down here to the workspace um, tray setting and that'll bring the page back up. Or another way is to just advance to the next page on the screen. And if you only have one page as I have here, then that's all you need to do. This is the arrow selection pointer so I can select something or I can use the pen. Right now it's set up to draw lines and arrows, straight lines, but I can change it by changing this. Here's another selection. Here's the thickness of the lines. If I like a really thin line, these are colors. I can go to the palette, change the colors that I have down here. And then this is a marker. I don't use that that much. This is freehand text. This is the eraser. This allows me to erase something like that. And I can draw something in, let's say, red right here. I can erase it like that. I can also change the size of the eraser for precision work. And here is the undo button, which allows me to undo the last few things that I've done. So. X is a way to uh, highlight something, let's say here, and then just delete it. I can undo, or I could do that with a drawing here. Now what I can do is kind of rubber band around it, and then delete that, etc. I can create a blank page. I can create a grid page here. There's a blank page. Now I have three pages, and I can look at my different pages. Um, this is for creating shapes. Right now it's set up to create a rectangle with a white filling. I can change the fill color, so now it's red. I can change the shape to something else if I want a star, like that. Please note that uh, when the shape is changed, the, color, the fill color does not necessarily change. Now, something else that's really useful is if I've created a page, I can create one that is like a template, and then I can duplicate it. And to do that, I have a page sorter here, and then I can highlight a page, and I can del delete it, or I can create a duplicate page. So now I have a second page. This is a copy of the first one. By double-clicking and keeping track, I have four pages. I'm now on page two, or I want it to be on page two. I can see I'm on page two. Now what I can do is select items and delete them by hitting the X. And then I have a clean page, and there's the other one with the material that I had before. So then I can do something different on this page if I wanted to. I can advance to this grid page, and I can advance to another page, and type text. This is, this is a new page. Okay, so this is a new page. Now I can use the trick of going to the mouse button, clicking to suspend the workspace page, pick up a page from the internet and screen capture this and bring it in. Now, please be aware that when you hit the pen to capture a page, that the bottom part can be lost. So you have to start gauging what you want to capture and how much of it you will be able to capture when you hit the pen to capture. So part of example two has disappeared it's actually here, captured, but as you can see, some of the text is lost. So you need to keep that in mind when you're capturing pages. Now what I've done is I've created a couple more pages in my Interwrite Workspace page. And I can look at all of those together with the page sorter 
and at this point I could move something around I can delete something I can put this page in front here like that and then close this and save those pages so I'll save this and I'll just call it example workspace file 2 and that should do it for us right about now. Some of the key elements that you're going to want to use are right here on the side of your board. This is the right hand side. There's the pens. We have interactive mode, whiteboard mode, keyboard. Calibrate is right here. This is what I used in order to calibrate the board. And then further on are a couple of other buttons. The ones I use the most are really located on the panel here that I've put together. and That can be changed any way you want. But uh, the big one to use here is Calibrate. One of the first things you'll want to do after you've hooked up your whiteboard is to calibrate your pen with the board. You do that by hitting Calibrate, which is off to the right. Then slowly put your pen down in the middle of the crosshair. This is so that the pen will work properly and be coordinated with the specific board. I like to do this every so often just to keep everything working properly. And if you go to another room, you'll want to calibrate there because your computer might be a little bit different. Now, so now we can bring up the workspace software and then create a file. One of the things I like to do the most is to be able to take something that's on the internet, this is a live shot from the internet, and then to be able to quickly create a screen capture of it simply by taking the software right here, here's my little panel, and then clicking on the pen in order to create a screen capture of this page. So right now we're looking at Wikipedia's gallery of curves now I have the software up, all I have to do is hit the pen and you'll see the quick effect as the Interwrite software captures this page. Okay, so now the page is a little bit different. This is something I can now draw on. And I can create anything I want here and be able to use it in my classes. If I want to switch to another page, it's still showing up on my web browser. I can hit the little mouse right here. I'm now back live with the internet and I can switch to another tab. So I could go to Perry Street Prep. I could go to a document that I might have up at the moment. Capture that page. Here's that page captured. Now I can write something here and say graph this. You can go back to the internet by hitting the mouse, take a different tab, find an interesting looking curve like this one, and then be able to capture this, make write comments about it, go back, interact some other way. I have the scroll bar over here. I can go do something like this, and then have this captured. I'm moving this because this is on the page and then I can point to this. Now I've captured this and say that this is this. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something about how to use your workspace software and can now use it effectively in your classroom instruction.